In this video, I'm going to introduce the use of Python packages and show you how to use one of the packages, the PyLab matplotlib package, to plot some data. So let's create a new program. PyLab packages, matplotlib, Python packages are ways to take advantage of somebody else's programming. The first rule of programming is laziness. Never write something from scratch when you can borrow somebody else's. This is not just because we're all lazy, it's because if someone else has written it, it's probably been tested and used a lot and so has all the bugs out of it. Something you write yourself will still have bugs. So if someone else has done it, use their result. And Python makes this very easy. You just import the name of the package. Some packages you have to install from the web, but a few key packages are already included as part of Canopy, including the PyLab package, which allows you to handle arrays of numbers and plot them. So to get a package, you just type import the name of the package if it's installed. And PyLab should be installed as part of Canopy. Now let's save. Put it on the desktop again, so we'll call this no, plot.py. And now we're going to run it. Now this program's not going to do anything apart from import the PyLab library. And indeed it ran successfully. There was no error message without giving you anything. Uh, which tells you that the fact that it ran tells you that it was able to find PyLab. If it gives an error here, unable to find package PyLab or something like this, it isn't installed on your system. You have to install it. But if you've got Canopy, you should have PyLab installed automatically. Now let's use this package. Uh, we can use a command in it to make arrays of numbers, generate a whole list of numbers rather than just one. The command for this is uh, a range. So let's call a, say, x values, which is going to be a list of numbers. So we're going to use the command from the PyLab package, the so pylab.name of the command, which is a range. So this means look in the PyLab package for a, a command called a range. And for a range, you start off with the starting value of your list, the ending value, and the step size. So let's start at 0, go up to 10, and have a step size of 0 0.1. And let's just check if that's working. It's a good practice whenever you write a program to test that it works step by step, whenever you put a new line or a few new lines in. Uh, rather than write the entire thing and then try it all out at one go, and get faced with a whole maze of errors. So let's check if that's work. We'll have print x values. Okay, let's save that and run it. And down here you can see it's printed out x values, and it is indeed an array of numbers. You can see that because it's got the square bracket on each side. It starts at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and runs up to just underneath the start finishing value. So it goes up to 9.9, .9, which is the way Python always does this. So that's working. Now the power of doing arrays is that you can do maths on every element in an array with just one command. Let's say you wanted to take the sign of all these numbers, instead of having to do the sign of 0, sign of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, you can just have a new array, let's call it something like, I don't know, y values, equals pylab.sign x values. And what this will do is it'll take the sign of all these things, um, this will be assumed to be in radians, and produce a new array called y values that contains it all. So if we then print y values, save that, run it, and what we've got is the sign of all the numbers in x values. Now to get it, so once again, it's a PyLab package command, so you have to type pylab.sign. If you just type sign, it won't understand what you're doing. Now that's all well and good, but it would be nice to actually plot this. So for that, we have the pylab.plot command. And this starts off with the list of x numbers, then the list of y numbers, And after this, we need pylab.show, which displays it. So this generates an image, but just generates it in the computer memory, and this one shows it. So if we save and run, 
here we have our plot. If you want to store it, we can click on here. And it will give us the option of saving it in various formats, like a PDF or a JPEG file. 